Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit, created by the mysteriously charming Grace Slick, is a song that pokes fun at the hypocrisy in parenting and plays like an anthem for the 1967 Summer of Love. Heavily influenced by Alice in Wonderland, we find a song with its marching crescendo and intoxicating rhythm reminiscent of Ravel's Bolero, contributing to the spirit of the time, a time of hippies, flower power, female empowerment, and drugs. All the while, Grace Slick's powerful quote rings true in a good way. As she puts it, we are the people our parents warned us about. This is the story of White Rabbit. Nineteen sixty seven, the summer of love. The Haight Ashbury district in California is considered the birthplace of America's countercultural movement. Activists, artists, musicians, and poets cultivating a powerful shift in art, fashion, and music. It was a time of free thinkers and visionaries challenging the government and its war audiences and their sensitivities to new ideas, and ultimately themselves and in no small part was Grace Slick a contributing mogul. Grace Slick, born in Chicago the day before Halloween in 1939 to a wealthy family, moved around a lot as her father worked in investment banking, and they finally settled in the San Francisco suburb of Palo Alto in the 1950s. She is a singer-songwriter, artist, model, and a fashion icon. But her most impressive story is how Grace went on to become one of the first female rock and roll superstars. After marrying Jerry Slick, her and her husband, his brother, and their friends created the musical group The Great Society. At the time, Grace didn't write any songs for the group, and instead rhythm guitarist David Minor was the lead songwriter. But he was overburdened with outside projects and just couldn't supply enough songs. So Grace's husband proposed a challenge, saying to her, What are you gonna do? Let David write all the songs? You know, do something. Well, Grace answered the call with an early version of White Rabbit. Grace worked out the song in just one hour on an old upright piano she had bought for 80 bucks. It was so derelict that the upper register keys were either broken or missing completely, but as Grace coolly puts it, she didn't use those anyway. Beginning with F sharp minor, the song takes a dark and twisted walk through the strange land Alice has found herself in. Much like Grace moving to the epicenter of the countercultural movement in San Francisco with lots of uncertainty. But eventually, when the lyrics Go Ask Alice come in, the song shifts to a bright major chord, seemingly signaling the strength of Alice and determination of Grace Slick. Obviously, the lyrics are directly related to Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, but Grace smartly used the story to subvert the status quo. She says, They'd read us all these stories where you'd take some kind of chemical and have a great adventure. Alice in Wonderland is blatant. She gets literally high, too big for the room, while the caterpillar sits on a psychedelic mushroom smoking opium. In The Wizard of Oz, they land in a field of opium poppies, wake up, and see this emerald city. Peter Pan? Sprinkle some white dust cocaine on your head and you can fly. But as with any piece of art, it's up for interpretation, and often misinterpretation. Grace goes on to address what she really meant with the lyrics to White Rabbit. She says, I always felt like a good-looking school teacher singing White Rabbit. I'd sing the words slowly and precisely, so the people who need to hear them wouldn't miss the point. But they did. To this day, I don't think most people realize the song was aimed at parents who drank and told their kids not to do drugs. I felt like they were full of shit, but to write a good song, you need a few more words than that. And she did create a good song, a great song, and performed it with her first band, The Great Society. But tensions were rising in her marriage to band member Jerry Slick, and a new opportunity had arisen. After performing at a benefit concert at the San Francisco Fillmore in 1966, the Great Society shared the stage with Jefferson Airplane. Jack Cassidy, bassist for Jefferson Airplane, was looking for a new lead singer, as their original singer was leaving the band to raise her child. Grace admired Jefferson Airplane for their professionalism, as opposed to the Great Society. So she joined, and they went on to become ultra-successful with a more polished version of White Rabbit topping the charts. And to help us understand the incredible talent of Grace Slick, here is a quote from Jefferson Airplane's bassist, Jack Cassidy, on why Grace was a perfect fit. He says, I like the individual sound to Grace's voice, so I asked her to be in the band. This was the girl. Also, her attitude was very different. 
She didn't have a submissive attitude at all, which is what we wanted. We wanted an equal in the band, someone you could work off, someone with fire in their eyes. If you enjoy these videos and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. My videos will always be free and this is a great way to help me make them better for you. Check out my debut album, The Holly Hobbs, on Spotify and Apple Music and click the like button, subscribe and notification bell because that is the best way to get notified when a new video is released. See you next time.